Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name's Victor and today I'm back with another VFX tutorial from MGK's Paper Cut music video. And the effect that we'll be covering is that tall ceiling room that he's in just playing the guitar. This is going to be the first tutorial that I ever cover anything in Cinema 4D because we'll be creating that tall room with Cinema 4D. All right, so first things first, you need to film your subject on a green screen. You need to have a low down angle. Now my lens only goes as wide as 24 millimeter. If I had something wider, I would have used that, but I don't, so I just worked with what I had. But something to keep in mind is that if you're going to do like MGK's video where there's a light at the ceiling that's shining down, you need to think practically about the lighting on the green screen. So I put a light directly above my head so that it would look like I actually am in that scene. All right, open up Cinema 4D and create a new project. And then we're just gonna start with adding a cube. I then increase the Y size to 2000 and then the X and Z size to 500. So now we should have this long rectangular prism but I'll just keep calling it a cube. All right, zoom out from your cube and hit C on the keyboard with the cube selected, and that will make your object editable. And now on the left side, you're going to hit that side selector and then select the very top of that cube and delete it. So now we should have that long rectangular prism, but the roof is missing. All right, now you're going to zoom into the cube and then create a new camera and then hit those four little dots next to the camera on the list so you're now in the camera's view. All right, now go into the camera's object settings and change the focal length to something wider. I went with 15 millimeters so we can see more of this room. Now reposition the camera to look up towards the ceiling and match the look that we see in that music video. In MGK's video, it looks pretty good because because they're using a practical set. Like I think those papers and those walls are actually there, but they only are real up to a certain height. And then I think they're digitally recreating it as it goes up. But instead of using papers, I decided to go with marble. But in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have gone with marble because it is reflective. And once I was done editing it, I was like, thing. I didn't put slight reflections of my body into the walls. So if I was doing it again, I would do something that wasn't as reflective, maybe using like concrete or something like that. But we're going to be creating that new material for the marble. And the place that I found my materials is on textures.com. You can sign up for a free membership. And then with every texture on there, they'll give you free copies, but the best quality you can get that I've seen is 1024 pixels, I believe. And if you pay for a subscription or you pay for those textures, then you can get 2048 or 4K. But I find that 1024 works just fine right now. So I found the marble that I wanted and then downloaded the assets that I needed. All right, now you're gonna double click down below in Cinema 4D to create that new material. And now add that material to the cube so we can see how it's looking as we're adding the textures. And then we're going to be adding those assets, those photos to the material to create the marble. I added the color picture to the color, the normal normal picture to the normal, the roughness to the bump, and I came back and did the reflection a little bit later. But you need to make sure that when you're adding those photos to them, you're also clicking on the normal or the bump. Otherwise, it's not gonna affect anything. And every time you add one of those texture photos to your material, Cinema 4D will pop up with this little note and I always click no. All right, now we're going to create a new light and I like choosing area lights. Those, from what I've seen, have just been the easiest ones to work with and they look pretty good. So create that new area light and then reposition it to be at the top of the cube. Now in the light details, I clicked on show and render, show and viewport and show and reflection. And after that, I resize the light to fill up the entire opening of the cube. I also decided to turn on shadow map soft, which adds to the render time, but it creates the most realistic looking shadows that I've seen on Cinema 4D. Now I went back to the reflection and removed the layers that were on there and create a new reflection legacy to then add my metallic photo to it. And I changed the attenuation to additive. Then I added another reflection legacy layer and set the attenuation to additive as well. And then I started playing around with the roughness, reflection, specular and bump until I had a marble look that I was happy with. Now constantly while I'm working in Cinema 4D, I hold Alt and press R and that'll bring up the active renderer. And that way I can see what it's gonna look like as I'm going on just a little small section of the screen and then sometimes I render to the picture viewer so I can see the whole thing how it's gonna look and then make comparisons as I make changes I find that to be pretty helpful now the last step in cinema 4d that I did was I made my camera lens just a little bit wider I went to 12 millimeters and then I rendered to the picture viewer and then from there you can save that image 
switch to your desktop or wherever you're gonna use it so you can then use it in After Effects as your background. And I was rendering it as a 16-bit PNG. All right, now that we're in After Effects, you're gonna wanna key out your subject and then add the photo of the background so we can start comping the subject into the background. I repositioned the subject and then added Red Giant Super Comp so I can further compose him in there to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I have a whole tutorial on Super Comp that you can check out right here, but it's pretty useful for comping. And you can also color grade your subject to match your background as well. And for the final step, I decided to add lines to the corners of the walls because I felt the shadows weren't quite dark enough going down and they're kind of getting washed out. So the way that I did that was by creating a new black solid and then mask out small lines lines going down the sides and then lower the opacity to about 13% and then I play with the feather and ended up with a look that I liked. And if you want to take this even one step further and fake some depth of field, you can throw a Gaussian blur in the background and kind of mask it out. It's really up to you. And that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and I hope you're just as excited about the introduction of Cinema 4D to this channel as I am. Don't forget to like this video and comment down below. It really helps expose my channel to new people who haven't seen my videos before. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next one.